On June 17, 2016, authorities in King County, Washington received a report about the disappearance of Jamie Haggard. The father of Jamie informed the police that Jamie had not been in contact with any family members, which was highly unusual. He emphasized that Jamie regularly communicated with her mother via phone every other day, and their attempts to reach Jamie through calls and texts had been unsuccessful. Expressing concern, Jamie's father suggested that Jamie might be in danger, pointing to the people she associated with. Interestingly, Jamie had recently become a victim of assault by her ex-boyfriend, Jason, just a week before her disappearance. Jason had been arrested and spent 15 days in jail for the assault. In a telephone conversation with the police, Jason disclosed that he had been staying at Jamie's residence in Kenmore along with David Haggard, Jamie's brother. Before going to jail, Jason had excavated a sizable hole in the backyard with a backhoe, intending to construct a pond. Upon his release on June 25th, he discovered that David had filled in the hole with dirt and was in the process of seeding the lawn. Jason expressed fear of David and raised the possibility that Jamie might be buried in the filled-in hole, prompting him to request a thorough search of the backyard. Armed with this new information, the police obtained search warrants for the residents and brought in David Haggard for questioning. The initial step involved a polygraph test to assess David's truthfulness in response to the detective's inquiries. While the video footage of the polygraph itself couldn't be obtained due to state law restrictions, subsequent events were captured on video. Explore the unfolding events in Interrogation Files, The Case of David Haggard. So, detectives are going to join us here for a minute. So, um, I went through my my chart. You didn't pass your test today. Okay. Um, uh, um, this is what my computer algorithm is telling me. Okay. Um, what does this mean? It means probable deception indicated, meaning that um, there's indications that you've not been truthful with us. Okay. Um, How are you reading this thing? How do you read it? Yeah, I don't understand what these numbers mean. Well, you, really the only thing you really need to focus it on is this, where it says probable deception ind indicated. That's the computer algorithm. What's this line here? That's just... Where I want to read? Um, yeah, I would expect to see you down over on this side if you were being truthful with me. Okay, in the middle is more of that. Just totally out here, out here stuff filled. Yeah, so you didn't pass your test. So what that leads me to believe is that there's some information that you've not told us about that we need to try to get covered up here or get cleared up. All right. Obviously, um, the police are out here digging into this thing. We're doing everything we can to, to you know, get your sister found. Um, you haven't conclusively passed your test. That's a concern to us. That was a concern to mine to begin with. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, and why was it such a big concern to you? So I told you I already felt guilty. I, I carried you guilt. Mm -hmm. Dreaming that, that I'm guilty, whatever happened to her is my fault and, and whatnot. So. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. Well, these questions, that's specifically why I didn't ask you, are you responsible for her disappearance? Because you told me that you felt responsible for it. I, yeah. didn't, go, I didn't go that route. Okay. Yeah, but you also said that, that this, this, I asked very specific, like, I asked very specific questions. Do you know where she's currently located? Have you lied to the police regarding right, her right, disappearance? Right. Well, that's not what your body's telling us. Your body's telling us something completely different. Okay. And so what we have to do is, is rely on, on, what we're seeing here, what your body is providing to us. A mouth can say one thing, the body tells the truth, and that's the way that right. I tell the truth. Right. So I, I feel very comfortably that there's more to the story, there's something that you're concerned about that you're not disclosing at this point. Um, and, you know, we're here we're here to try to get this thing resolved, obviously, okay? You're down here for a reason. Um, you know, there's been some suspicious things that have gone on, you know, since her disappearance. Um, I think that there's a lot more to it that, that you're holding back on at this point, but this isn't the time to do that. This is the time to, to, to deal with it. Let's get your sister back. Um, let's move forward with this investigation. Let's bring her home, you know. Despite what everybody in her social world thinks, it's her family that matters, including you, including your father, whatever his relationship with you or her are. You have a right to get their daughter back, whether her life is fucked up If you... She's big, foul play, I go to Scott. I don't know anything else. I told you guys that. I don't know anything. Like I said, if I was given the test about Jamie's disappearance, 
having no involvement whatsoever, I would completely pass the test. You don't even know Jimmy, so you would have passed. Just like the Green Precisely. River Killer guy, he fucking didn't, they asked him the wrong questions or some shit, and he fucking, just because they didn't know any of it, goes, that's why he passed his first test. Don't believe what you see in the yeah. paper about the Green River Killer. I'm not going to go through this with you guys. I, I didn't do anything to my sister. I haven't done anything to my sister. I don't know where she's at. If I did, I would tell you. Bottom line. Bottom line. My life is pretty fucked up, and that's why I didn't want to take this test to begin with. But uh, other than that, I wouldn't hurt my sister. I wouldn't hurt her. I wouldn't hurt her or my children. You can ask any of my, my, my family history. I got a lot of fucking family. You can ask them all about it. Plenty of men tell me that they wouldn't hurt somebody, and they didn't. But they ended up being involved in disposing of a body. I didn't dispose of no bodies either, sir. I'm not that way. What are we doing burning all this stuff out in your yard for the last couple of weeks? We've been burning freaking... Uh, I mean, the, just to, I'm not accusing you. Just tell me what it was. What were you burning? Uh, the mulch and shit. There's all kinds of shit around the fucking property. We've been burning trash, all kinds of crap. There's all kinds of crap in that house. We've been trying to... Me and Carly have been trying to get our leg up. So we're just trying to... I mean, Jason, we thought we were going to be gone. We thought Jason was going to be gone for a minute. So we're going to freaking try to get in with, get with the owner. That was it. And what was reburied in the hole? Anything? Garbage? Anything? There's garbage. There's all kinds of shit. There's and that whole property he buried. And uh, there's axles. There's all kinds of shit in that fucking property. He had a stupid ass pump. I mean, uh, uh, not a pump, but a uh, pond that he's gonna put in. It was dumb. Yeah, yeah. You know, nobody wants a fucking pond. And it didn't just get buried or covered up in one night. It's over a duration of time. Okay. A bunch of garbage burns in that hole. I mean, it's. Bunch of wood. Yeah. So, if she's found, and if she's found fairly quickly, and if she's deceased, the medical examiner will absolutely be able to tell us how she died. Still. Whether it was an overdose, or violence, or whatever. Whether she's found in your backyard, or whether she's found buried out in Big Fin Hill Park, or in Little Lake Washington. If she's found quickly, we'll be able to say it. And I'll say it, man. Her lifestyle absolutely leads to the suspicion that she fucking OD and people freaked out and didn't know what to do. And yes, that can be family members. Yes, that can cause a, a failure of a polygraph or a non-passing of a polygraph, polygraph rather. Yeah, I don't know your, you, I don't know her, but I know men in your position that have been under suspicion due to circumstances and they've denied and denied and denied and then, but in the, in the end, the truth comes out one way or the other. And, I haven't done anything, so. you, you know, let's just face the legal side of this thing. What's the crime of disposing of a woman that ODs? I have no idea. It's fucking gross misdemeanors. I, I have no idea, that. sir. So I, I'm telling you that because I don't want you or anybody else overly freaked out about an OD death and guys panicked and got rid of the body because it's a fucking gross misdemeanor at worst if anybody even gets charged. So... I just want to make sure that's clear. We're not investigating, you know, some felony crime. If, if, the, if in fact, she just died through her lifestyle, OD, you know, she's got a history of that, clearly. You guys keep saying she's dead. You guys know something that I don't know? Like, I don't even know, know that she's dead. Well, we do know a lot of things about her behaviors and issues that lead us to believe that she's no longer with us. I hope the hell she calls her mother right now. Says, Mom, I have been, I have been out. I've been in, in rehab. Of course, that's not true either. Cause she's no. well past the blackout periods of being rehab. So in my gut, I believe that uh, she's dead. Either by someone else's hand or she's an OD. And now it's a recovery. In fact, that's why we're all out at your house today. You know, we don't, we're not convinced she's out there. Sure as hell we're going to check it. We're going to be checking it with heavy equipment. We're going to be doing it with the cadaver dogs. We're going to be, we're going to be covering that base today, 100%. And if she is found out there, somebody's got some explaining to do. And that explanation, if true, that she OD can better come out without a lot of pressure from the police, that I'll just come out so we can then do believe it. Dave, for example, Six months, let's say, let's say her body's found six months from now, and the medical examiner can't determine her cause of death right away. They ultimately will, but 
And then six months from now, you say, okay, well, back in July, I uh, was scared to admit that she died of an OD. It's going to be very tough to prove it was an OD at that point. If she fucking died from some fucked up reason, or, you know, any other cause that happened around that home, and somebody panicked and got rid of her, and fucking put it out there. Let's get her back home, let the medical examiner look at her. I have nothing to do with any disappearance or anything that has happened to my sister. None. Then you should have passed this polygraph. I should have passed this. Absolutely. And guilty knowledge, or, or excuse me, guilty feelings about uh, lifestyles uh, doesn't affect polygraph. It's a black and white issue. No, it isn't. D uh, Bullshit. Just, hey, it is. Man. Bullshit. You've been doing this for fucking years. No, I guess it was a specific be, question. You'd be able to bring it in court of law if it was. No, it's not. I'm not even going to go through this, man. I have nothing to do with my sister. Nothing to do with her disappearing. Whatsoever, man. Where's I love her to death. I don't know where she's at. I don't know where she's at. I don't know what the last six months of lifestyle is she's taking on with all these brown people. I don't know the Mexicans that she's been hanging out with. I don't know any of that shit. The last two months, I fucking cut her off pretty much. Is her purse at your house? No. Is her phone at your house? No. No, the cops know that I was on. I was on her. I'm on her voicemail because I had her phone when 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 uh, the cops to call the cops on Jason when they arrested Jason. The, the big the big officer was there today. He even knows. He, he told my dad that you know he had his he had her phone. I was walking around with her phone for like two hours. Mm -hmm. She had no voicemail, so I put one on there for me. That was on her there on there for her. Um. What is at your house that belongs to her right now? All of her clothes and shit? Well, a lot of her stuff is in that it's carport. It's in the carport and uh, a few things throughout the house, I guess. I don't know, whatever's in Jason's room. I'm sorry, I'm going to communicate with my uh, partner out of your house right now. When was the last time, let's make be very formal, I know you've been asked this question before, but I haven't heard it straight from you. When was the last time you physically saw her? Uh, the morning that she came back. Thursday, I guess. The ninth, eighth, ninth. Mm -hmm. And did you then talk to her on the phone after that? Yeah, I talked to her on the phone now. It was July 8th. No, what time? June. June. Yeah. And is that the same time frame that, uh, what's his name? It was Daly that was supposed to come back to your house? From jail? No, he was coming the next day or something. And the understanding was, if I got it right, tell me if I'm wrong, she was supposed to go pick him up? She was going to pick him up, yeah. Okay, and, and do you believe that ever happened? No, he showed up. No, he showed up that morning. How did he get there? You know? Uh, somebody picked him up. Did he say specifically who picked him up? No. Was he in a car or? Yeah, he was in like a like uh, a SUV type car. I guess. Was he pissed that she didn't show up? Or did, did he mention it? Or? Uh, yeah, he was just like, well, that's where he was. I thought she'd pick me up. And then uh, he asked to borrow a bicycle, and I said, I didn't have one for him to borrow. And he, uh, I said, what about your ride? He goes, oh, they have to go to work or something. And then he didn't show, and then he took off, and we didn't hear from him at all for like five days, six days. He just showed up at my house, asking where James at. And I told him, I thought she was with you. Just worried that, you know, she's with him or with whoever else she does brown with. I don't even know any of those people. But he says, uh, I've been stuck, no phone, no ride, no nothing. Uh, was it legit? Did you, did you believe that she wasn't with him? Did he seem no. genuine? No, I thought, no. And where is he today? I have no idea. You know he's got a bunch of warrants out for him? Oh, sure he does. He's a visitor. 
So where do you think he might be? Because, I mean, I'm not as well just snag up everybody I can. We're, we're doing this today. I have no idea. He hangs out with J-Dog and I have no idea, sir. What do you mean with Scott? I don't think, I don't know. Are they, are they tight? <laughs> I have no idea. No. I really don't know. So, on the day she's missing, she has her own cell phone, right? Yeah. And you got your own individual cell phone, right? Yeah. So. I didn't have a phone. Today's, you don't have a phone at all? I didn't have a phone at the time. Well, why not? I think my phone was broken, or out of minutes or something. I mean, I, I had a phone, but it was just out of minutes or something. Okay. So, whether a phone's out of minutes or not, you know, it communicates with the cell towers all around. Right. To, to give us GPS coordinates and more things. Right. Around. One of the things that we're doing today is uh, we served a um, search warrants on a variety of phone companies, including your phone, including Jamie's phone, including some other people's phones. And to me, I'm a tech guy, so this is just why I, the reason I say this thing is going to be done today and solved today is because we're going to know where she's at today. We're going to know who took her there, and we're going to find her dead or alive. And it's all it's all going to come through technology. Her phones are going to tell us exactly, her phone records are going to tell us exactly where she moved. But most importantly, we're going to compare her phone's movements with the movements of everybody else's phones. And it's not going to be too difficult to see the path. Plotted on a Google Earth map, which phones moved together between the 8th, 9th, and 10th of July. Yeah. Well, my phone probably was at the house the whole time. Well, I so maybe. Maybe that's the case. I Sorry, if I didn't have a phone. We had to do the work so I didn't carry it with him. And then secondarily, the phone doesn't just talk to its cell tower in the area. The phone talks to whoever's a, a Wi-Fi connection, right? The router at your house, the router at your neighbor's house, maybe, if it tries to connect. The router at Starbucks. So nowadays, law enforcement has the advantage of just nailing down the position of phones way better than we did a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So those paths are going to tell us a lot about her and who was with her. And I, I don't have those records yet. I voted when we were having a meeting yesterday about this case. I voted to hold off on hitting your house with a search warrant until we have those records. But, you know, resources are resources and we needed to do it today. That's fine. We had the back of today. We were ready to do it. So, since I can only assume you're not being completely honest about things because of the um, polygraph that you did not pass, it's not personal, but I just, I believe you're holding something back. I know you're holding something back. And these things are all going to come out later, no matter what you say today. If you're not being honest with us right now, you're putting yourself in a hole because I'm afraid later on you're going to have to backtrack and kind of say, well, okay, this is really the truth a month or two or a week or a year from now. And it's going to be unbelievable. You know, if you're caught in a lie, you're caught in a lie. You can't backtrack from that later on. I came home. When I got home, there was a fire outside the slider grass door. It was, a, it, was a, it, was, it, it was put out. It wasn't totally put out. It was smoke on it. Mm -hmm. I seen it. That raised suspicion to me. I didn't know what that was about. I've been thinking about that ever since this and investigations started taking off what it was about. Other than that, I don't know anything else. Why is that yeah. relevant? Why do you think that's relevant? Because it was just, just you guys keep asking for about that backyard and about why we buried or, you know, buried uh, what we buried and burned there. You know, it's just, it's just weird. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it just seemed, seems like something I should say to you. Well, most guys would have a standard burn pile, right? Yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you're not going to burn next to the house. Burn yeah, you're not going to burn next to the house. So are you saying this is something different? Yeah, I just said, it was, yeah, it was weird. It was just weird. I was totally flabbergasted. It was in the it was in the hole that we had for, for the, the septic that's been messed up there. So we we dug out a trench line. That's how that whole yard got tore up mm -hmm. to begin with, because the septic was fucked up. Septic or sewer? Ugh, sewer. Yeah. The sewer was fucked up. The pipe was fucked up. So we had a... So we got... Uh, Joe would come in with a little mini and we, we had estimated a little line, you know, and stuff and fix the piping or whatever. But there were still issues with the draining or something. And so they had a little hole that was outside the the uh, outside the window, you know, the slider there. Mm -hmm. that was, and, and then the pond was over there, so I don't know what he was doing. That's my man Jason still. 
you know, he had this pond dog, and then he's saying something about the stuff that was messed up or whatever, but when I got there, I got there, the, like I said, it was just, it was weird. Carly showed up right after me, and I, I even said something to her, you know, like, this is fucking, what's she burning right next to the house for, you know? Just kind of pissed me off, you know? I didn't think anything of it, though. Whose fire was it? I thought it was James. I thought Jamie left the fire. What day was that? That day. That day. Yeah, the day. The last time you saw her? Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. you confront her on it? Or did you not see her after that? No, I didn't see her. She wasn't there. No, that's what I was, I was pissed off about. The house was wide open. Here's this half fire, you know. It's, like I said, it wasn't a fire, but it was smoking, you know, smoldering still. Was that the only time the fire had been at that particular location? Yeah. Yeah, why would there be one there? There's a plumbing issue. Like, like, I mean, just because somebody digs a hole doesn't mean you put a fire there, you know. So, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying, trying to rack my head if anything else that I could be withholding from you. And that's the only thing that comes to mind. Well, you didn't pass the test for some reason. You're the only one that knows that. And I guess I can't emphasize enough that you, this isn't going to end, obviously. This isn't going to go away. I understand it's not going to go away, sir. You know, until yeah. the time that she calls her mother, which I, at this point, I, I think we're done with that. We're, we're in a recovery phase. You know, the judge authorized a, a search warrant for a body and evidence of murder or death. And so we're, until it's proven differently, it's, it's murder, right? If it proves that she OD like so many women and young men have been ODing lately around Seattle, then so be it. Jesus, man. Last year we found two fucking people in suitcases because their friends panicked, didn't know what the fuck to do with bodies, and folded these chicks in both cases. Folded the chicks up in suitcases and dumped them. One in SeaTac or one in SeaTac, one in fucking Kansas. Jesus Christ, just call us and say, she fucking got too high and we fucking, you know what I'm saying? Just fucking deal with it. You don't uh, sweep it under a rug. You don't sweep a loved one's body under the rug and pretend like she's just vanished because we're going to prove whether she's just vanished on her own or not. There's a certain point where people are going to understand that, that those with knowledge of Jamie's disappearance, it's sort of natural for them to deny it and freak out for a while. But after a certain point, it, it goes from a natural denial to a kind of an evil intent or trying to protect themselves because of allegations of crime. Well, if, for example, David, you tell me right now that, oh, fuck, I don't know where she's at. Did you go and recover her today? The things that we would be telling her family, most importantly, her mother and father would be that, uh, in the end, Dave helped solve his case. He was scared, he freaked out, but Dave helped solve the case. Compare that to three months from now when we find what's left of the remains, and the question remains in the air for her mother and father. I mean, this is family dynamics here. They're going to suspect you. And so it's almost like, get out in front of this fucking thing. Suspect me already. My dad does. Well, so I, I don't know the dynamics there in that family. It sounds like you got some issues with your. your I was closer to any of the kids than he ever was. Yeah. So, I didn't do shit. So whether you whether you whether there's respect there or not, they have a right as parents. Yeah, they do. You know whether they're gone or not. Yeah, they do. Right. We all have a right. I'd like to know too. Yeah. So. Yeah, this thing's just going to move forward no matter what. I understand that, sir. I don't know anything. You know something. You didn't pass your polygraph that every one of us in this room should have passed it. It truly didn't know. It doesn't matter that you're related to it. It doesn't matter that you're guilty about our lifestyle. Those questions were so specific. That's why I love polygraph tests regarding cases like this, is because they're nothing but specific. Jason wants to ask me in a pre-employment polygraph whether I stole something when I was a kid. I don't really care if he asks me that, because I don't think that's going to be accurate and valid, in, in my opinion. But when he asked me, was I 
Did I dispose of Jamie's body? I'm going to say no, and I'm going to pass that test. No, he didn't want to take the poly test the first time I came here because it was under meth. I mean, it's it's all kinds of demand, dynamics in there. I'm telling you right now, I don't know where my sister is. If I did, I would tell you. I would tell you. If she OD'd in front of me, I would tell you. I don't know. I don't know. Did you get into a fight with her on the last time you saw her? The, the, no, the, the, the day before we were fighting. Did it turn physical? No, not any more than no. Well, what does that mean? I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, freaking, it was physical at first, but I mean, I was just getting to the truth of the matter. I mean, I was just, I, I was, just, you know, on top of her, but it was nothing, there was no violence or anything. The cops came there. I know that. And the cops checked her out, and I was cleared. I didn't do anything to her. 24 hours later, though. 24 hours later, she wasn't at home. Right. She was gone all night. She was gone all night. I guess we'll find that out when we get the phone records today. Yeah, well, she, yeah, you will. You'll find that out. She's gone all night. She didn't come in until the next morning. So, a couple things are obviously going to be dealt with. And here's, uh, I'll just tell you our job. When I see your phone records and I see her phone records, uh, I suspect that I'm going to see some travel together. I think there's a good chance of that. I think it's going to prove that you're not telling the truth right by yourself, and then we're going to have to do this all over again. Um, I'm a little late to this case to know why the f*** you're painting your truck and completely cleaning your truck out. So when we have the Washington State Crime Lab out searching your truck in about an hour, believe me, I've had cases where people have hosed their truck out, scrubbed with, God, they've used stone masonry cleaner in their truck, and this crime lab still found blood. Because guys don't get where they should really clean. So all these things are happening today because we can't figure out what to do with you. So prove them right or prove them wrong. That's our job, isn't it? It's what you can pay us for. And by God, we're going to do it on this case. I don't care what her lifestyle is like. Nobody has a right to be disposed of improperly or killed in a fight and then dumped up in uh, Eastern Monroe or wherever the fuck she's at. Remember, your phone doesn't have to make a phone call to be talking to the tablets, right? I'm not a lawyer. Or charge me or something. I haven't done anything wrong. You can look at my phone records. You can check my truck. Is it going to clear you? Yeah. We're doing that too, Dan. Don't forget. Yeah. Our job is to clear people, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're certainly not going to Wrangle into somebody yeah, right. trying... Whatever. Where are you, a witness or a Whatever. suspect? Suspects in your eyes. Well, you're you're something in our eyes. Mm -hmm. You know you're not under arrest, right? I haven't done anything to my sister. Do you understand you're not I'm under lawyer. arrest? I'm a lawyer. Okay. Well, let's, let's get out of here then. All right. I hope you're right, Dave. I wasn't there. But in the end, if she's... um. Somewhere because she OD'd, I would assume that at this point you've got the message and you need to tell us. If she died under other circumstances, you know, it will come out. So we're going to take you back to the house. You can't go back to the inside the house until we're done. We're going to be there pretty much all day. Is there someplace else you'd like to go? No, wait, can I get my wallet? Or? Yeah, did. Yeah. Let's see, you're not under arrest. I know this is uncomfortable. Where's Scott at? We got other teams this dude at? doing other things. Listen, you've mentioned Scott a couple times, but you also just talked about a lawyer. Would you yeah. want to tell me about the story about Scott? Okay. No, I, I told you the story about Scott. Well, you, Scott needs to be checked. You're suspicious of Scott. Yeah, is really. Is taking a reason? Because he's like admitted that he's done something there. Tell me that story again. Now that. Driving in the back seat of my car is a little difficult. He said story. when Jason came home, Jason came home out of jail, he was with Scott. Scott picked him up. They went and did some brown together. Natasha is a girl that just got out of out of feds. She's in an Oxford house or something in Seattle, I guess. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in Seattle. Uh, they had picked her up too, I guess. Jason says that it was 
him, Natasha, and Scott in his truck. And Jason said, what the f*** is going on in my house? Does Jason come home? He's, like, tripping out, like, you know, what's all this stuff? You know, Jamie's missing, supposedly. What's going on? Mm-hmm. Scott says, shut up, dude. You're going to get me in trouble. Don't worry about it. She's not at your house. She's been taken care of. He says this specifically to Specifically Jason. to Jason and, and Natasha. And Jason told you about that. Yes. Yes. And he brought it up again last yesterday. And what was yesterday? Yesterday we're just he just he just said, dude, I think Scott did something with your sister, man. I'm sorry. Jason said that. Yeah. He goes, honestly, I don't think I don't think you've done anything, Dave. But I think Jason Scott I mean I think Scott's done something with your sister though. I know you're trying to be positive and optimistic, but I'm telling you, man. I think Scott done something with your sister. Have you spoken to Scott yourself face to face? Not about it, no. What's the story about rolling her sister up or something? You said that. Well, yeah, that was the, when he first started coming back around. You know, like he said he was arrested. You know, we checked that not to be true. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just like he just weird. Shit. Like he started coming around like the day before Jason got out, and then and then talked. You know, I mean, Jamie's already gone. Right? Yeah, Jamie's been gone, and he, and then he starts talking like uh, he says that uh, he'd been in contact that she called him which we don't think is true, you know, we're, we're like, you know, why would you call him? And it just doesn't seem, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. But I know Jamie was definitely afraid of him when he fucking came in and got his cut, and he kept asking for his cut, and he kept asking for his boots. Cut of cash or cut of leather? His, 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 uh, his, his leather, his, his, uh, oh, his yes. biker, yeah, yeah, he, he had his cut there, he needed mm-hmm. his cut. Um, Brought it up that it was valuable, you know. Uh, she could have got money for it, you know. Jamie could have got money for it, or whatever. You know, Carly didn't think that was, you know, what was up with that. You Did know, he get his shit back? No, he stopped asking for it. And Jason said it's not there. I mean, it's in Jason's room, supposedly. You know, I never seen it. You know, I seen it one time when Jason, or when yeah, when Jason was wearing it. But other than that, I never seen it. You know, but Jamie came out of the room saying, you know, he took his cut. They're coming, dude. The banditos are coming. And that's when I, you know, was telling you or telling you guys in the car that I just was taking half of what she said with a grain of salt and the rest of the half was just charged up with bullshit. You know, Jamie, it's not even banditos. It's Hell's Angels, these claims. You know? I mean, that was... I didn't think anything of it. Was he upset that she kept a cut in the room or kept a cut for him? No, he he says that he never took the cut or he wouldn't be asking about it. But he was asking about it. When he first started coming around, I started asking, "Hey, can I get my can I get my leather?" Mm-hmm. And he calls it cut. Can I get my cut? And uh, it's got to be in Jason's room. And I said, "Hey, dude, there's got to wait for Jason to come out. We're trying to figure out what's going on, with Jason." I go, "We don't want to fuck off his shit. It's his room, you know. Let's leave it alone." So he came back. Jason got out. He came. He asked for it. Like I said, once more time, one more time. And, and the last few times he's been over, I haven't heard a goddamn thing about it. And that's what we brought up yesterday. It was like. Why doesn't he ask him for his cut anymore? Jason's like, right? You know, I don't know. So you, what about this comment he made about rolling, rolling somebody up or whatever? He just said that, he said, you know, I thought you meant like get off the carpet. I was like, no, I'd roll you up before I roll any of my, you know, that's my little sister, dude. What are you talking so about? he's like just kind of implying that maybe you yeah, did like, something to your sister? What's that? He's implying, he's implying that you like I something? wanted something to be done with my sister is what I took it as, yeah. you know? He That's was right. like, yeah, he was like implying like, well, I thought you were kind of serious, dog, you know? And like, yeah, I mean, I mean, before, a few days, three or four days before any of this had happened, Jason and Jamie were in it, in a fight, in an argument. Um, Jason was like, I can't handle this dog, you know, I can't, she's got to go. And I'm saying, well, I get her out, you know, and Scott's saying, I think it's the only right that the, you know, family member takes care of it. Or I'll take care of it, you know. And I never, I mean, just these things. If I reflect on back, you know, on reflect back on our conversation, doesn't mean much at the time because we're just all everybody's hype, you know, amped up. Mm-hmm. But I think about it then, you know, like what the hell were you talking about, dude? You know, like the whole time the guy was talking about, you know, getting rid of her. And Jason says she swears to God that she has a fuck, that he has a hatred towards women, you know, and he fucking just. The guy doesn't have very much longer to live, and he just... Why do you think that? Uh, those are medical issues. He's got some really bad medical issues. He's telling you that? He's telling yeah, you he's telling you that. Yeah, yeah. He's telling you that. You don't know if it's true, though? I don't know anything, no. He, no, he has a bad brown problem. And this is the dude? I showed you a picture of him. Right? Yep, yep. And he's the dude that was supposed to be... 
was locked up from like that day, that night. That night, he came over that night, got 60 bucks for me, and it's supposed to be arrested. That night meaning what? The night that Jamie's was no longer around. Eighth just the ninth? The ninth or whatever, yeah. The day Jason went to jail. The same day Jason went to jail, he supposedly went to jail. According to himself. For, yeah, for domestic violence, yeah. Against his ex. He, he was a brothel? Uh, Redman, I guess. I'm oh, sorry. Does he have a, a wife and a boy? I saw some pictures on Facebook. Yeah, he has a son and his ex-wife. Was he sleeping with Jamie at any point? Not that we know. Who's been sleeping with Jamie? I don't know. No. Hate to ask a question, but I gotta ask a question. Don't know. Supposedly she wasn't even sleeping with Jason. Have they been dating? Or, yeah, uh, it's supposedly they've been dating and she had me give him an action or whatever. That was one of the things we fought about that day. That, that the cops all came. Yeah, I suppose we had her tied up. Because she was claiming that Jason came in, you know, Jason took it from her that night. You know, she, she was just, I mean, I couldn't believe half the words that she was saying. You know, so I didn't take it. You know, all I know is that Jason was playing games. And Jamie, all this brown, is all tends to brown. Well, I take chalk up as. These guys are playing, they don't care about anything but themselves. And it's all just this brown, you know, shit. Jason said he was going to quit work and he was going to come home. We're going to deal with this. Because I was telling my girlfriend, you know, he's playing games, babe. I don't know who to believe. You know, Jamie, I tend to believe my sister because in the, in the heat of the moment when I fucking look her in the eye and I fucking drill her, you know, tell me fucking what's going on here, James. I can trust and believe that my sister's telling me the truth. She points to him. Jason. It's all Jason. Yeah. So that's fucking, you know, I, and, then, and I confronted Jason and he was going to come home and deal with it. But then, but then uh, you know, Jamie flipped the, the whole script around and said me being pissed off at Jason and was gonna deal with Jason, she claims that she's gonna take a bunch of pills. You know, and that's when the whole the whole picture came out, you know. I had her in the in the uh, And then Jason's popped the night of the ninth or the day of the ninth. Is that right? No, Jason was popped that night. He comes home that night, yeah, because the cops the cops come and uh at this time I'm dealing with my sister, she's in the bathtub. The whole time I'm thinking that she's uh, taking a bunch of pills, and I know she, I don't know what pills that she takes, but I know she gets some gnarly stuff. So I'm not sure, you know, I went from rage to empathy here, and I'm, and, 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 and I'm an addict, so of course I didn't call the cops. I should have called the cops, but I didn't. I get her to throw them up, or I'm threatening to stick her, uh, I don't want to stick my finger down her, because my little sister, she bite my finger off, so she's mad at me, you know what I'm thinking. Uh, I get a spatula, she said, no, I'll throw up, you know, I was going to stick a wooden handle or something down there, and she said, no, I'll throw up, so she's acting like she's throwing up, I take her to the shower, I get her in the shower, uh, I'm on the phone with Carly, uh, dealing with her, going back and forth, um, I'm on the phone with Carly, and King County Sheriff's, or the Sheriff's are walking up, and I say, the Sheriff's are walking up, and, and at this time, and she's, you know, and I'm talking to Carly, and then uh, they're walking up, and, and so I go back to the bathroom, and at this time, the bathroom door is not open anymore. It's it's partially shut, you know, a little bit. And uh, and and you know, like I said, I'm just I'm thinking back on it. And I'm tripping on it because of just how the layout was. I didn't think about much of it at the time, but I, I opened up the door. And this now here's this girl that was supposed to be took a bunch of pills, um, was laying in there uh, in her fully clothed. Um, at one point, the tub was filling up, and I had, and I realized that the the uh, you know the little stopper that stops the water was up, and I you know I, I put it down, and I you know slapped her on her arm, and said, "Not on my watch, James. You know you you better stay with me. You know what the f is you know." To deal with that, to to going in here to tell her that the sheriffs are here, this girl is like fully undressed in a, in, a, in a towel, getting out of the shower like she just was taking a shower, healthy. Like, like take a shower, like, like, yeah, kind of like a little bit maybe groggy, you know, or, or you know, still playing a part, but I'm like, the f cops are here. I was tripping on it, you know, and, and, and tripping on her, and she's like, well, just go in your room and, and pretend you're sleeping. I'll tell them I was in the shower. And I said, at that point, I said, no, no, I'll f deal with it. I have no wants. So how did I have no wants or warrants. I see what's going on. How did Jason get arrested? So when they came in, they, they, they asked me, you know, uh, do we step outside, sir, put your hands up. We got called that there's a woman being held against her will here, tied up. I said, I admittedly, they said, we got an anonymous call that an anonymous person received the text message. The only one I sent the text message to was Jason. And I said, that's 
Jason, it's playing. It's, it's, it backs up my theory that they're playing games here. He's playing games. He's a manipulator here. <clears throat> they talk to Jamie. They come back out. That's when the morning cop says, "Look, dude, are you are you are you a doctor? You going to med school? No. Next time your sister takes a bunch of pills, call my woman. You know and what they said to me. And I understood that. I mean, I'm an addict, but I, you know, I get it. I get the rights and wrongs and. Didn't want to get my sister in trouble or anything, you know, and I didn't want to get, I mean, it's just, that's, you know. And we get some trouble for an LD around. You know, that's what I, I mean, it's just, you know, and then I told the cop, I understand, yeah, I would call, I mean, naturally, if she was, you know, in a, if it was life or death, I really felt like it was like, life or death, I would have called the cops, but I didn't, I felt like we had it under control at the time. Apparently, she's coming out of the shower like she just took a shower, so it seems like she said they're under control. They said, who's Jason? And I said, Jason, you know, and I knew he had a felony warrant. So I'm looking like an asshole. And they're like, come on, man. You live here? You say you live here? You don't know your roommate's last name? You know, I just look like an asshole. And I'm like, they're like, yeah, you're protecting him because he has a felony warrant? I'm like, whatever, you know. They're like, this is how it's going to go down. We're going to be waiting for Jason. We know he's going to be coming home. We suggest that you find something else to do. If he comes to this door and you get in a physical altercation with him, you will go to jail. We're telling you that right now. Yeah. Because we've been out here already and you know that situation is going on. If he comes home and you get in a physical confrontation with him, you will go to jail. Your best bet is to leave here. We can't tell you to leave your house, but we suggest that you leave here and call us when he comes here. And we'll get him. And that's what happened. Okay. So they popped him at the house later then. Yeah. Jamie's still alive and well. Yeah, and she took off in his car. And so uh, he's been out of the pictures from what, to the 25th or something? He was in for like 20 days or, or less than that, 15 less days. Less than yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yep, and then Scott was like missing in action like the whole time. It was really weird. Really weird how we reflect back on things and you just try to put pieces together and you're just like... Okay, so let's talk about that hole for a second. So. He digs a hole to fix the sewer, has some story about making a, a water feature to the, yeah, yeah. To the land owner, the, yeah. the lady who owns the place. Even snaps some pictures. Yeah. You know, so we know there's a hole there. Yeah. But now, of course, the place looks really nice. Who filled in the hole? I know you've been through this before with Detective Bartlett. Uh, me and Carly, pretty much. Yeah. That's a, so I do a shitload of landscape, kind of side job. And yeah. You know, I saw it pictures of the hole when it was a hole that's a shitload of dirt to have to put back it wasn't Com really compacted correctly and all no, that. it wasn't good. no 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 it's done correctly looks pretty flat how, how was it done how physically was it done a shovel and rakes how long did it take uh the whole time it, it got done the day i think it got done the day jason got out it was a little bit at a time or one a little bit at a time and what did you put in a hole specifically uh, brush and trash. Brush, things will decompose. Or trash like and metal objects. No, there's yeah, there's there. trash in there. No, there's a big ass TV that got busted up in there. <laughs> TV? Yeah, big old giant one of those old school fighters, yeah. What made you want to fill in the hole, not Jason? What was the hurry to, to bury it back in? There wasn't a hurry. There wasn't a hurry, it was just that I thought the palm we thought the palm was I thought the palm was stupid from the beginning. And uh, we wanted, Hope wanted to, from our understanding, Jason had that place for the next three years to work on it. And I had already done, we had already done, helped him with the plumbing. Uh, we've already done, helped him with a lot of stuff. And I figured, you know, why, me and Carly figured, why let this, this house go? Why, why let somebody else get it when we could do the work? We too, I just did remodel for my boss. That was just that. So it wasn't like anything new, mm -hmm. you know? So the only thing that you put in the hall were some household garbage and TV, anything else? No, they're just, uh, no, just, just wood debris. There's all kinds of wood debris. And shit. Yeah. It's well, not, it's not compacted. I mean, if you go to dig it up, it, there'd be holes all over. And is that is that primary hole right above the sewer line or off the side? Or no, it's off the side. Um, east side and west side. Maybe the east side, I guess. Up there, yeah, if you look out the back door, it'd be off to that side where the, where the 
along with it. And east of the uh, sewer line? Yeah. Sewer line's right there, real close. Yeah, so it's two line got fixed, right? You guys did that business? Yeah, it's got half ass fixed. But what fixed one was? Yeah. And the burn pile, the primary burn pile for the backyard is what, in that circular? There's a little circular thing out Yeah, yeah, that, that's what we made. Yeah, they had the burn pile was on top of that slab or something, I guess. Okay, and then this other burn pile you talked about, or the other burn site that you talked about right out front of the... It was right outside slide. the slider, dude. It was right next to the house. Like, what How burn, much here we talk about? What puts, it's just, uh, it's just wood debris. Just right there, from, like within... Like feet? right from there, yeah. It's stupid. Like dangerous stupid? Yeah, like, like make the house get catch on fire. Yeah. Like, that, didn't, that didn't make no sense at all. Why would Jamie do that? Has she ever started a fire? That's exactly what I, my question was. That's what I was bitching about. Like, why the fuck would, I mean, at this time we're not even thinking any fuck. Does Jamie do work, you know what I'm saying? Would she even be Does Jamie there? do work? Yeah, Jamie was a nurse. Well, does she, I mean, does she go and clean the house, clean the debris? Or, she's, or is she lazy? She's kind of lazy. Thing? I mean, she's, yeah, I mean... Like, all her characteristics over the last six months have been really not Jimmy, so, you know, I, I I can't believe that she'd be calling me for everything under the sun and then be over at my dad's telling him that I'm I'm beating on her. It's, it's, well, she did. I, I don't know why she did. I know, I can't, and I can't wrap my head around it. My girlfriend can't wrap her head around it. I mean... Did Carly and Jimmy get along? Somewhat. For the most part, I mean, they, they do. I mean, you know, I guess a week before, a week before fucking, uh, this all went down, I guess Jason had, had hurt her or something, and Jamie, I mean, I guess Carly took some pictures for Jamie on her phone. Okay. Pictures of her, you know, bruised back or something. Because of what Jason did to her? Yeah. Why did Jason do that? Jason looks like kind of, looks like kind of a... Jason is, uh, no, Jason has a rap sheet of beating the shit out of women. It was really, really bad. And her and Jason were together briefly? Yeah, somewhat. I thought they were together, but supposedly they weren't together, and she's with this other dude, Chris, and supposedly she's with this dude, puppy. I don't fucking know. Okay, so to be crude about it, who do you think she was sleeping with in the last two months? I think she was sleeping with Jason. At the house? To be honest, yeah. Because she loves him or something? Dope benefit or yeah, something else? Dope benefit, the house benefit, yeah. dope benefit. Just a place to live, a place to crash, and that's the, that's the, unless you're paying rent? She gets a lot of pills from the pharmacy, supposedly legitimate, maybe she's selling those out to pay, to just have spending money? Mm -hmm. Did she end up getting her supply and... So, I don't really know she, anymore, sir. I, I think I'm not, we're not the dope cops. Hey, she's fine. Just, if she calls her mother 10 minutes from now, we pack up our shit and go home. Nobody's going to be investigating anything, anything other than whether she's alive or dead. So, I don't give a shit if she's selling her pills. It, it, it clearly is relevant if she's been murdered or is missing. So, do you know if she ended up even getting her pill supply for June? I don't know either. Do you have any pills that belong to her in the, in the no. house? Is there a stash of, uh, was it Vicodin? Is that what she gets? Uh, she has Vicodin, morphine, all that shit. Why? What the fuck more? Why'd she get no morphine? Idea. I have no idea. I have no idea, sir. And I just found out that she was on psych meds, too. Just got a prescription too. So, in your personal space in the house, is there going to be any uh, of that type of medication? I'm not talking about like one pill that you might have picked up here or there. In my personal stuff? Yeah. No. Or, or, or no, I don't put pills. Carly, I don't know who Carly is at no. all. Is Carly goes in the bathroom. No. No. Carly just had a friend that just died off the ground. Yeah. They fucking really just frown against it. And what about Jason? Is you? Jason is in the ground. Oh, yeah. But that's not your thing? No, we don't do pills. Okay. So will there be any pills in your personal space at the house? No. How about Brown? No. 
Well, I guys don't want to admit the brown. I get it. No, no, no. no. There should be eight. Of so you've admitted the mess. Yeah. So to me, it's like, what the fuck's it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right? Exactly. But no, I mean, I've, you know, I've done brown. I, I think I told Jason you did. Yeah, I did brown one time. Uh, I don't know. It sounds stupid coming out of my mouth, but you gotta have a certain respect for drugs, I guess. You know, and you gotta know. Uh, you gotta choose your poison, I guess. In other words, you know, you gotta choose your poison. And I, and when I was going through the divorce, when I was in the separation with my wife and and stuff, I, you know, was using meth and heroin like I've been doing it for years and I think it was because I wanted to fucking, you know wanted to go away or something I felt like I don't know but I was doing like 50 60 laps just shooting it up like I was a rock star and it lasted for about five weeks and I knew that I got kids that wanted me around and I didn't want to go that way so I detox it took like two weeks fucking just pain and torture you know horrible you know and i was trying to relate that to jamie you know it's not good brown is not good it sucks you in meth sucks you in it's bad too but i don't know so what i hope to do is when we get your phone records and we'll do our business with the records that we need to do uh, there'll come a time when i'm probably going to want to sit back down with you and go over the phone records with you, no matter how they look, whether they're damning looking or just old phone records a guy would have when he's in his house. So I don't want us to end here as as enemies. I mean, it's your sister. We're going to work for you is the way I look at it until we determine that, you know, we're going against some person who killed her. Or if she died on her own, so be it. But until that's proven, uh, we're all in the same boat. But if you put yourself in our position, you see exactly what we have to do. We have to clear the people around her from suspicion. And you're, unfortunately, very difficult to clear. Uh, some people are easy. We've already cleared a few people just based on they were in jail. I mean, like them or not, it's easy to clear, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, that's a yeah. done deal. You know, he looks like a fucking suspect, though, you know, and I don't know for a lot of other reasons. Yeah, yeah. no, he, he tried to say his parole officer says he's a suspect, but I, I just don't see. Well, it's the physics. But, man. I mean, it's he's just, you know, like Jason keeps saying, it's almost like Scott, it's almost like Scott thinks, like, he wanted him to do something, or I wanted him to do something. Well, would it's Scott, like it's scary. would Scott have taken her on his own to be like, hey, dude, I took care of your problem he for you? Might as well have, or might, might have, you know, I mean, that's. Fucking Jason was sitting down and thinking about our conversation, which me and Jason had yesterday, and he's convinced that Scott did something with her. I'm trying to be more of the positive, you know, the will positive, you know, and my sister's going to call her mom up any minute, you know. I want her to be calling her beer. I do too, but I, I, we all hope that she does it, but you got to be realistic, and it's time to be real realistic on this thing. It's been well over a month, and young women... Well, Scott's been somewhere, he's been doing shit, and he hasn't been accounted for, and so has Chris hasn't been accounted for. Is Scott's phone number in your, uh, in your phone? Yeah. Under under what name? Scott. Just plain old Scott? Yeah. Is he only Scott in your phone? Uh, yeah, I think so. Is your phone with you, or is it back at the house? No, it's at the house. Okay. Or no, you guys got my phone. Do we been... You guys got my phone. She's had my phone since the day I came here. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. You got, can I get that back to you? Oh, wait. She's trying to copy it. Yeah, she can get it back to you. Yeah. But that was a deal, right? You were yeah, going yeah. to copy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. talk about that soon. What's Scott's number in there? Have you ever confronted Scott face-to-face? -face? No. What did, you, did you do something like my sister? No. Do you feel comfortable doing that? I think, uh... If I put you on a wire, I, I, would you uh, I mean, be on no the offense, phone? No offense, I'm going to uh, jam up when I see him. Well, if I put a wire on you and, and put you two together in a, in a restaurant or in a bar? Yeah, I'm going to be jamming him up. Yeah, I will. 
Um, you're willing to go to that sort of oh yeah to find out where you're oh, okay okay you know and then jason keeps saying that scott keeps asking him uh let's go fishing and and, and jason doesn't understand why he keeps asking him that because jason doesn't fish where does scott fish you don't know but but he made references of taking somebody down the river road he hasn't gone down the river road in a long time or something you know and just and how stupid by River Road, do you think he's talking about Stormish River Road, or...? I have no idea. He just says, I haven't gotten on the River Road in a long time. I don't know. How the I, how the shit I heard this guy say, I thought it was full of shit. And now, so stupid. And now, I'm thinking it's probably been stupid the whole time. Your sister sell uh, Scott pills, you know? They did brown together. I don't know if they but she sold them pills. I know if, uh, Danny... She sold pills to you, and uh, I think uh, Joe, uh, his son's grandma, Lisa, it's Tom, Tom, she sold pills to Tom. Other than that, I don't know who she sold pills to. Where's Jacob at? Where's your girlfriend? Uh, I'm talking to detectives somewhere else. Okay, she's in the back. So, uh, we are not the dope detectives. I think we've made that pretty damn clear, right? Yeah. Um, it's my understanding that Jamie did leave some pills behind. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, there are some pills there. But I mean... Did you sell a couple of them? I don't care to do, I'm not looking at them. Yeah, we did sell some pills. But I mean, there's, there's yeah. Mm -hmm. What type were they? Uh, maybe they're per 30s or something. Okay. Anything else? No. Did you sell anything yes. else at Jamie's? No. There were some uh, other pills that we found that was in our possession that we were going to sell, but we didn't. There was issues there still. Where specifically were the pills that she left behind? Uh, they're in her, they're in her, in the carport, I believe now. Oh, the pills are there still some. They're in a, they're in a, in a, they're not in her name though. They're in a dog's name, like dog container, you know, pill containers. Like somebody just put them in there. Like she put them in there, yeah. Okay. Are those part of the prescriptions that she gets herself? I have no idea. I know, I knew. The only thing I knew that she took that she got was uh, was Vicodin. But I know that she's progressed to. Uh, supposedly she's getting morphine and and. Uh, and Valium or something, you know. So why did you feel like, why did you feel comfortable selling her pills? Uh, I don't know. I just figured it's what she had done to us. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a lifestyle yeah, issue going on right yeah, now. It's, yeah, it's weird. She was selling her us. I mean, yeah. Yeah. How much did you get? You think total? Uh, I don't remember. Like something significant. Three hundred bucks. No. Uh -huh. Hundred bucks. Two hundred bucks, I think. Okay, so a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. The pills are gone. Yeah. Except for some that might be left. Well, there's some other kind of pills too that we, that we didn't think about later on, but we were to so. Do you know what they were? Or are they're they? they're in the no, they're in the mix of those dark pills. Jane, okay, I think we asked you before. Is her purse at the house? I don't know. You said no before. Well, no. Yeah, I don't know. So. Honest to God, truth is, I don't know. Okay. I haven't seen it there. Right. Her purse or her phone was not there. We haven't seen it around. We've cleaned okay. up the house, the property. I mean, we haven't seen it around. Either one of those. Okay. The, the pill thing is, is uh, like I said, the, the other pills, they're all in a dog's name. Like, uh, one of the people that lived there before had a dog. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, but they're, you know, they're James Pills, I guess. Are there something that people would want to buy? Yeah, I guess so. Whatever they are. Yeah. And like I said, we, they've just been outside our mind. Actually, I forgot about those. Because we don't really do pills. We don't, I just know somebody down the street that actually 
his girlfriend's a big, his new girlfriend is a big pop, pop popper, so mm-hmm. it just kind of came into, just kind of rolled into, yeah. So an opportunity rolled up and you just took the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I understand that. <sighs> Where specifically were the pills that you sold? In the kitchen. She would just leave the f***ing shit out like that? I'm guessing that whole house is full of people that don't trust each other, in a, in a sense. So why the f*** would you leave them all out in the kitchen? Um, it's pretty stupid, but I don't know if we don't totally not trust each other, or if we... I mean, it's... I don't know if that's the right word to use. It's not like we don't really trust each other, but it's not like we trust each other. I don't know. It's, it's I'm going to guess up. you guys don't trust each other because you're in the lifestyle. It's fucked up. You know, the, the closest family members are going to rip off each other, even though they love each other. I mean, it happens I'm, all the time. When there's, you know, when there's pills and dope involved, that's just, that's more normal than not. I guess one option to, you know, if I got to think of the f-ing bad side here is that you sell, you sell or allow her pills to be sold because you know goddamn well she's not coming back. I.e., she's already gone. So it, it keeps coming back. How can we clear you from suspicion? I think your phone records will go quite a ways to do go one way or the other. And either one of those things has got to break to clear me. So I haven't I haven't done anything, and I will keep repeat myself that I haven't done anything. Here's what I think happened to her. I mean, it's really only two scenarios. She either you know, OD'd somewhere, most likely the house. Somebody freaked out and had to get rid of her, or. Uh, Somebody uh, probably beat the f- out of her and killed her. And I doubt she was stabbed or shot. I'm gonna guess that she was probably f- kind of thumped, pummeled to death, massive head wound, and then she obviously somebody had to get rid of her. Whether that happened to your house or not, I don't know. But the crime lab's gonna figure that one out. Yeah. In in the end. I mean, David, you just, you're not passing the polygraph. The, the simplest polygraph we could design for a man like you in your position. One that you absolutely should pass if you... Just can you read those specific questions? Polygraph, I don't about care about, I don't want a lawyer, I don't want to talk about polygraph anymore. Okay, well, it's about you're not a If you want to be want, done, we can yeah, be done. Yeah, I don't want to be done. It's, it's, I'll help you talk to Scott. Okay, because we still need to team up on this. We're going to find your sister. Right? right, yeah. I won't be enemies with you. Yeah. Well, I'm not the guy. But you got to know where I'm, I'm thinking. Not the you got to know all the thoughts in my head. Yeah, you know every guy. step that I'm thinking. Yeah. you got to know every scenario that we're going to consider and rule in and rule out. And this is uncomfortable for you, I'm sure. You don't have to like us or whatever, but we're going to do it together. And this step of the polygraph was so important to us that we... That's why we kept wanting to do it with you. So let me end this with kind of a um, overall reaching statement. David, is there anything that you haven't told us yet that you think is significant in this case? You know know damn well it's significant that you've chosen to keep to yourself. No, except for where is Scott and where is Chris? The whole time I... You're talking date Chris? Yeah. You know, like are this they guy. Pal- are they pals? What's their story? No, I don't think so. Okay. I don't know. Well, you know, I mean, they both deep brown. I don't know who's friends in, in that in that social. They do know the same people, though. You know, they know this J Dog dude. I don't even know who he is. Where in Where in Redmond is Scott? He just Williams moved. Head. He just moved to a gated facility, I guess. Uh, you know, one of those facilities that you got to like. You got to have money. You got like to money to live in. Or? Yeah, yeah. You got an inheritance. He's got he's got some kind of trust and and supposedly that's how his wife is involved his ex wife like he's gotten he's beat about her or whatever uh, you know they're no longer together they divorced 
from my understanding. But before they got divorced, he got an inheritance, and somehow they ruled her as the power, the uh, the uh, executor, basically, yeah, of, of all his findings or his money or something. So she gives him an allowance or something. Oh, that sort of scenario. Yeah, yeah. Even though yeah. she's his wife. Yeah, she's his ex-wife now. Yeah, yeah. But so they live together because she has power over all of it. And so she, they're still living together, just not as men. Yeah, like, yeah. In town living somewhere. Yep. Yeah. Like out by Avondale? Or? I have no idea. Jason knows. Is she? Uh, is she on the Brown too? Uh, no, not, not that I know of. As far as I know, is that she was a uh, church town girl that he met years ago and he made her his wife. She didn't do much any day. But you don't know for a fact whether Jamie was sleeping with him? I uh, know, nope. Would it be surprising if she was? Did he want to? <laughs> yeah. And she's been, I've always seen It would be her. surprising for my sister. It's, a lot of people that my sister has, has gone for lately has been a big surprise. So I guess no, it wouldn't be a surprise. It wouldn't be a surprise, but it wouldn't be. As I said, I don't see her. But, but so you don't know she manipulated, you know, Scott. I mean... She broke down, she manipulated one of my buddies and got a vehicle from him and fucking and broke down out in, you know, out in Carnation or some shit and we called Scott to go help her out mm -hmm. and then Scott went MIA. So we're still trying to think of, of if he actually hooked up with her that night. You know, we don't know. Uh, Jason's convinced that that's the reason why he wasn't answering because he was with her. You know, he claims that she wasn't because they just left my buddy's car on the side of the road on the opposite side of the, the traffic, so you get, you know, so a cop would drive by and go, what the f is that? Turn here right there, you know? And then you get impounded, you know? Did it get impounded, yeah. ultimately? Yeah. So, shall, that was, what's the time frame of that incident? That was like months before, I guess. Months before. A couple, couple months before. Before she was missing? Yeah. Yeah, that was when she first just met Jason. Is there a place you want to go today? Because it's going to be quite uh, a while. I'd like to get my wallet and... I don't know. I'm in a restaurant or something. I mean, sometimes out, you okay. just have to go to a movie or something for hours. I'll figure out something. Okay, I think we're going to manage to get the wallet. So, again, you can't leave it... You can't leave this with something that we're going to find the answer to and then prove you're lying about. Any even small aspects at this point, right? That's why I told you about the little fire. That's why, yeah. yeah. So, before we get, is there anything else that you know damn well we're going to figure out that you might as well talk about right now regarding your sister's behavior, somebody else's behavior, your behavior? No. Okay. Hey, man, everything, everything you say, I want to take it face value. I right. had a very difficult time, though, I guess, because of the polygraph. You don't want to talk about that anymore. I understand. But I actually came in here having every faith that you were going to have a uh, past polygraph before we move on. You got me thinking I would pass it. I knew it, though. So. Story of my life. Why, um, so my partner just texted me this uh, picture of a uh, note that you left on the garage for your girlfriend. I know my reading of it. You said I don't want to talk anymore. Okay. Uh, but here's my only question. I don't need to dig into your emotional head. I know the cops talked to you about that the other day. The patrol cops went up and talked to you about it. And they didn't, they did not do a involuntary. Uh, there was nothing. That, yeah. Exactly. Yes. So I guess my only question, was that note written? When was that note posted? This morning, right before we showed no, up? No, or, that, was, that was during that time. Okay, so that note's a few days old at least. Yeah. So there's nothing new. I forget about it, yeah. Okay. Do you still feel that way right now? No. Feels like No. Okay. So things I'm required to ask. We see the note today. We need to see the note before, obviously. Does Carly think you had something to do with James' disappearance? No. Okay. Because uh, in the note, it almost looks like you're convincing her that you didn't have anything to do with it. And, you no, I didn't do anything. So, yeah, I just wondered, does she doubt you? No, she doesn't doubt me. Okay. I gotta go to the bathroom. And then we'll get going, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Let me do the press here for a second. You guys can shoot the crap. As the profanity-laden interrogation concluded, coupled with the failed polygraph, detectives honed in on David, harboring strong suspicions that he played a role in Jamie's disappearance. The revelation of his deception during the polygraph was compounded by the unsettling discovery that David had been using Jamie's Facebook account, sending messages masquerading as her. With warrants in hand, authorities commenced the excavation at the property shared by Jamie and David. The search extended to the garage, revealing clothing, furniture, documents, and a prescription pill bottle bearing Jamie Haggard's name. Cadaver dogs scoured the yard during the excavation, delving deep into the earth. Despite reaching several feet below the surface with an excavator, the search yielded only miscellaneous garbage and wood fragments, with a distinct diesel gas odor emanating from the burned wood pieces. The fire pit yielded no evidentiary value prompting detectives to extend the search north and slightly eastward. Digging down further, investigators uncovered bags of garbage containing personal items, including new clothing with tags, but no trace of Jamie was found. The exhaustive search left detectives back at square one, despite sporadic reports of Jamie being spotted in other states, all of which were ruled out by her family. Nearly two years after her disappearance, a Snohomish County Public Works crew stumbled upon a suitcase containing remains and a red bedsheet along Downs Road near Maltby. Lab tests confirmed the identity as Jamie Catherine Haggard, who left behind two daughters. The red bedsheet was traced back to the Haggard's housemate, while GPS data implicated David Haggard, showing him driving near the discovery site days after the confrontation. Further revelations unfolded as detectives learned of David's sexual relationship with his younger half-sister, marked by a contentious dynamic. Jamie had expressed fear of her half-brother, sharing concerns with friends that he might harm her. In October 2019, King County prosecutors charged David Haggard with second-degree murder, alleging that he not only killed his own sister, but also went to great lengths to conceal the crime by dismembering, burning, and disposing of her in a suitcase by the roadside. Following a month-long trial in King County Superior Court, a jury convicted David Haggard of second-degree murder, and he was sentenced to 15 years in prison. The prosecution emphasized that David had maintained a charade of concern for Jamie's whereabouts while actively concealing the grim truth about her fate from their own family.